A YouTube viewer sent in a request, well, sort of. Hi Aaron, I've been trying to make a formation where it defends in a 4-4-2 but attacks as a 3-4-3 and would love to see your attempt. Jack underneath said I'm trying the same but attacking in a 3-4-3. Figo, Figo then replied to Jack, wing back on attack, half back, DLP, box to box, inverted winger or inside forward and some kind of striker. Well Vector, I have attempted it, kind of sort of it is a 3-4-3 but we are focusing on attacking in a 4-4-2 just like jack wanted just like jack wanted so let's get stuck in to how we created that creating this tactic was a process we needed some development time so this is how the tactic started out it was a 3-4-3 we are using twitter because i was updating my twitter people if you're not following me on twitter make sure you are at rdf tactics but as you can see we are or well, we did start with a standard 3-4-3 we was using a halfback so you can kind of get the idea of using a wide center back he stretches he goes wider our halfback drops in and then voila already we have created our back four but looking at the pass map it is we're, we're miles away from a back four here it is clearly a back three with two holding midfielders and if we look into the game or we see a game screenshot we can also see as well Antonio here on the ball he's just so central our three centre backs are very very central and it leaves no space for a halfback to drop in and be that halfback so scrolling down it's not pretty but we are getting there the halfback has attempted to drop back and almost in line with the centre back it does seem like moving your attacking midfielder on the right to attack midfielder on the central but slightly on the right obviously helps the dms naturally will look to go forward in support when there's no other central midfielders there so what i found out what was happening is that my halfback he was he was less likely to come deep to get the ball because there was nobody ahead of him in central midfield and to him he thinks that well he needs to support the midfield it can't just be his other central midfielder alongside him trying to cover the whole midfield naturally if there's no other central midfielders now in fm23 your dms will look to push further forward that's why you see a lot of teams now using a double pivot in football manager like a 4-2-3-1 but with two dms or 4-2-4 but with two dms because those two dms will still act like central midfielders were kind of as they look to push up and cover and support in central areas so moving my right winger into attacking midfield Field clearly helps and we can see in the image now Andre Almeida who was playing as the wide centre back has now stretched so has Morata Antonio on the ball and there is our halfback now slightly looking like a back four we won't get a perfect back four that's all in line what you will get is your halfback being kind of a an aggressive sweeper which is what the halfback is in football manager if you read the role they are kind of an aggressive sweeper so they're gonna kind of position themselves slightly ahead of the center back but then again it's still a back four and we can create a nice triangle with the back three natural back three and that one halfback dropping deep into the back line and this is where i left it on twitter because obviously i wanted to make the video instead and now we can see more of a 4-4-2 so Marata, antonio Arnsons, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, and Andre Almeida. See, Andre Almeida again stretching wide more into that wider half space, and you kind of got our back four here, and then we've got our midfield four, Grimaldo, Enzo, Neres, and Bar, and then our two strikers, Rafa and Ramos. Of course, Rafa being that inside forward, but Neres was the advanced playmaker, which is on the right hand side or in tackle midfield. But look how deep he is, he's in line with Enzo creating that four man midfield. Next picture again, our our halfback is on the ball this time, bringing the ball out from the fence. And this one here, this is more of a beautiful image for me. You can see it's almost a back four again. Of course, our halfback on the ball being that aggressive sweeper, bringing the ball out. So we've got a back four here. We've got our midfield four, Grimaldo, Enzo. Look at Neres dropping deep to collect the ball as the playmaker. And then we've got Bar, the right back, or now the right winger. And then lastly, we've got Rafa and Ramos up top as the two strikers. So, we have created the 3-4-3 three, three that transitions into a 4-4-2, which is absolutely fantastic. Now what we can do is go into Football Manager and well, we can kind of break down the tactic, give it a little tactical analysis, but also look at a game where we was using this and you can kind of see how the tactic plays out break down the tactic all of that good stuff and hopefully you guys can make a similar tactic maybe it's not a 3 4 3 that goes into a 4 4 2 but maybe you guys will catch some ideas from this video or 
you can send in another request if you have another kind of request like this hey aaron i want a 433 transitions into a 072 yeah. <laughs> yeah. something like that you know you guys know what i mean wow i'm getting too excited but now <laughs> let's go into football manager The screenshots that we just looked at was from this game against Pacos de Ferreira. We beat them 4-1 away from home, very comfortable, where we had 16 shots at their goal, XG 1.78, which could be slightly better. But looking at the possession, we had 61% of the ball. Looking at the ball share, we had 60% of the ball share. So let's have a look at this highlight. Here's Bar on the ball. I believe he's going to turn it back and play it all the way back because we do like to hold possession. So here's the goalkeeper with the ball and we can see the back four is trying to shape up now with the halfback dropping deep. Thank God our wider centre backs are already in a sort of wider area. So here we are. And this is kind of the screenshot that I took um, from Twitter. So you can see Morata, Silva, our halfback and then there's the wider centre back there and then the midfield four Grimaldo, Fernandez, Neres and Bar up front we've got Rafa and Ramos so here's our 4 4 shape and we've actually scored from it as well here's Bar. he plays it all the way out wide to Grimaldo he's gonna drive into the box pull it back into Rafa and there we are 1-0 to Benfica so this is just us gaining back possession. Their striker wins the ball in the air. Here's Almeida inside his own box, plays it to Morata. A halfback again, trying to drop deep, but this is kind of in transition play. Here's Morata bringing the ball out and he plays it out wide to Grimaldo. Here comes Benfica pushing forward. Grimaldo out wide again. The wing back's clearly important for this formation. Fernandez, David Neres on the edge of the box, smashes it in and it's 2-0 to Benfica. So here's Bar, the right back, plays it into Almeida. He plays it into Morata, Morata back to Silva. And I want to kind of get a screenshot soon. Here we are. So we've kind of got our diamond shape, which is actually very, very nice. So though we are looking to build up in a 4-4-2 shape, we still kind of got a 4-4-2 shape because you can count these people as four or a three plus one equals four and we've trying to build out from the back if now our back four is flat it makes it a lot more difficult for us to be able to build out seamlessly so it's also nice that we've got a diamond shape here and it just makes it easier for us we're able to pull players out of position we can disrupt their block of course here's Almeida on the ball the halfback plays it into Bar Bar looking for David Neres their defense has crumbled completely and Neres with a nice finish dinking the ball over the keeper and for the last goal of this game has Ramos Orns I can't pronounce his name says Morata he's gonna bring the ball forward Morata sorry Morata David Neres out wide into Bar Bar losing oh he's won the ball back and then plays it into the box for Ramos 4-1 to Benfica. We are also very capable of beating the elite teams playing the football our way. Now, this tactic will come with, well, this uh, download will come with two different tactics. One where you would use majority of the time and the other way you're playing against Bayern Munich, Porto, Sporting, those sort of teams. The bigger teams, basically, the bigger teams. So we had 49% of the ball, looking at the ball share again, 49% of the ball. But we are still able to play our way Though statistically, you could say Bayern Munich slightly were the better team. They are an elite team. We're not elite. As Musiala, Gnabry loses the ball. It is moving very, very fast. There's Otam Mendy on the ball. He's going to turn it out wide into Almeida. And his Otamendi plays it back to Morato. His Musa, our striker, dropping deep to collect the ball. David Neres now. You can kind of see that back four again. It's sort of a back four again. It's that diamond shape of the four or three plus one, as people in the football world like to say. Here's Morata, Grimaldo. Through ball into Musa and what a finish. Now for the second goal in this game. Here's Grimaldo, David Neres. The halfback out wide is good. Oh, what a lovely. Grimaldo is a fantastic player. And David Neres as well. He loves a cheeky finish. And for the last game that I want to show you, again, we're playing in the Champions League. We're playing Tottenham Hotspur. Now, this is me actually using the stronger tactics. So not the tweak when you're playing against the bigger team. This is me actually trying to have a goal at Tottenham. And it worked. We beat them 4-0. We had 16 shots at their goal. Two clear cuts we created, 50% of the ball, but looking at the ball share, we just have that 1% more at 51%. But here's Lugo, who, Lugo, Hugo Lloris, the goalkeeper. Oh, fantastic work from Ramos there. Here's Rafa, plays it back to Ramos. And well, that was a nice goal, I guess. And for the second goal, Fernandez has the halfback on the ball. 
He's going to bring it forward this time, plays it into Rafa, but he doesn't progress his run. He kind of holds his run. His bar and wow. Absolute wow. Third goal was a uh, penalty, almost called it a free kick. And for the fourth goal, it's another penalty or free kick, as I like to call it. <laughs> this game, we beat Tottenham 4 0. It's probably a good time to tell you cheeky guys if you're not already subscribed to hit that subscribe button if you already are make sure your notification bells are on so you never miss a video also like this video that's hugely hugely important i know i stress it every video for some of you guys it must be annoying to hear this but it is very important in helping this channel grow but also helping this video grow and in the comment section leave a comment any tactical recommendations a similar video to like um, a similar video to this sorry would be would be great it would be great so let's talk about the tactic <laughs> So this is the formation, obviously using a tactical board. It's a 5-2-2-1, asymmetric. It attacks or in possession, we're looking for a 4-4-2. But when we are defending, we want to defend in a 3-4-1-2. So we can press with two strikers. We can kind of have that one. If, they're having a, if they've got a holding midfielder, we can use that one, that attacking midfielder, trying to man mark that holding midfielder. Or we can kind of just leave that. Um, attacking midfielder on the right hand side to do the dirty work in that half space now when it comes to the player roles or the player instructions i will talk more about the man marking so this is the kind of tactical idea the two strikers now are formed with seven and nine the two fullbacks then push up as wingers our wide or our center backs spread open allowing number six to drop deep and then number 10 drops deep into midfield and then our well, there we are, our 4 4 2. When creating the chances, as you saw um, in the highlights, our fullbacks are very, very important. They like to get into those wider areas. We've also got a four at the back rest defense. So, again, a lot of the times, if we do lose the ball or if they clear the ball from across, we've got four guys ready to win the ball back and regain possession for the teams and if they head it out again we've got two central midfielders just on the edge of the box ready to press and win that loose ball similar i wouldn't say exactly but similar to what we saw against tottenham with the striker winning the ball from one of the center backs and yeah the wingers are generally creative like wingers team instructions i like that positive mentality for this formation i think it really really works well trying to be on that front for attacking width we have set that to wide now this is one of the tweaks that i made earlier i spoke about the three center backs not stretching and allowing the halfback to drop deep i don't know why my head is down when i'm talking like that <laughs> but yeah um stretching that attacking width it allowed my wider center backs to get into those wider areas but it just allowed everybody make the pitch as big as possible and it just allowed for those um little player movements it just allows the right sided midfielder to drop deep into midfield it allowed my halfback to drop into the space now created by the center back stretching and it just worked really really nice approach player we are also passing the ball into space so what this is doing is asking the players to put the ball into space rather than into the players feet and i feel that we've got a lot of space to attack we've got the complete wing back running into space the inside forward running into space the advanced playmaker he's actually dropping into space but going forward generally we've got a lot of space to attack and i felt that passing into space benefits it's, it's just a good thing we're playing that from the back passing directness slightly shorter with an extremely high tempo final third low crosses which you saw Grimaldo many many occasions trying to pull the ball back in transition when the possession has been lost counter press trying to win the ball back instantly is going to be very very important when the possession has been won though we are holding our shape we're not attacking or trying to throw everybody forward we're actually holding our shape when the goalkeepers in possession one way i tried to get my half back to drop into the back line was trying to distribute the ball to him did it work not really out of possession high press with the line of engagement defensive line on much higher don't worry that drops with the other cautious tactic trigger press on on more often prevent short goalkeeper distribution but also drop off more something that i did notice again it's a tweak that i had to make during the season 
when the opposition are playing with the ball at the back and we're defending with a much higher line, a lot of the times, one way they were just beating us is just fudum, long ball, just a long ball. And it wasn't one of those where my defenders were acting silly and not attempting to win the ball. We were just generally too high and I felt just dropping back more helped a lot. So when they do have longer spells with the ball, our defenders start to drop back and it kind of protects us from that long ball. But now let's look at the player roles because the player roles are very, very important to the defensive system. Now looking at my defensive responsibilities and trying to create this 3-4-1-2 formation, um, I'm using my left winger, first of all using the left winger and he's going to mark a specific position, not player but position and that's important because we don't want him tracking a single player, instead we want him to be marking a certain position and that helps us transition our defensive shape. So he's going to be marking, so he's the left winger, he's going to be marking the right centre back area and for my wing backs they're marking the midfield area wide midfield area so midfield right midfield left you will see the player roles in a second and for the right winger um the right winger half right winger you've got multiple options like i um, explained earlier you can kind of have a marking that holding midfielder or you can have a marking their left half space so we are trying to defend in a 3-4-1-2. Player roles is of course the way we did achieve this mark specific position for the left winger. He's marking the right sided centre back for the wing backs. They are marking while well, the left wing back is marking the right midfield area. The right wing back is marking the left midfield area of course and our attacking midfielder is marking the wing back left position but again that all depends on the opposition's formation and how they are set up if they're possession based and they're using let's say a Rodri or something then maybe we want our advanced playmaker to kind of sort of mark this area which then it is a flaw you are creating kind of a flaw which then allows their wing back or full back a lot of space and a lot of time on the ball so that's one reason why i've just left it on wing back on the left generally for you guys we do have two um formations one's on balance one's on positive balance we are now attacking with on standard and also our possession we have dropped our defensive line the player roles in goal goalkeeper no added instructions at the back the left side of center back's a ball playing defender he's dribbling more tacking harder the wider center back is tackling harder as well and the defender in the middle is a central defender on cover just keeping possession being safe in possession basically moving into our midfield we do have a complete wing back on the left but he's on support tackle harder and mark specific position the right wing back is, is, is the same but now he's on attack and the halfback we are using a halfback he's going to be dropping deep but also taking more risks trying to make or play those line breaking passes we do have a defensive midfielder on support dribbling more getting further forward and tackling harder kind of more our aggressive midfielder kind of a box to box midfielder not really but he's going to get further forward and of course once he gets further forward and we lose the ball he's going to remember that his job or responsibility is to defend so he's He's going to track back similar to a box to box midfielder on the left hand side our inside forward kind of a false nine or a false winger he's going to be moving into this sort of area here alongside the pressing forward he's going to be sitting more narrow tackling harder marking that specific um, position we do have an advanced playmaker as well roaming from his position this is important this allows him to kind of drop deep to collect all he wants to do is look for areas to collect the ball he wants to find areas where he can be effective and this worked really really well in getting him to drop deep to collect the ball from our deeper areas and also creating that four-man midfield he's going to be tackling harder and marking specific position lastly up top a pressing forward on attack no added instructions the second formation is the exact same player roles but what we are going to do now what we can do now is look at the results that we got with Benfica now I must stress this video was less about the results I used Benfica Benfica are a very good team in Portugal this allows me to kind of see how the tactic is working it doesn't work I'm going to say this again it doesn't work if I press a, if I use a team that's predicted to finish 12th 13th 14th 15th I am not going to see the football that I want to produce because the players are not good enough so it makes no sense using a halfback when the team doesn't have a halfback it makes no sense using two completed wing backs when the wing backs on the, those teams don't have good crossing good pace it makes no sense we're not actually going to 
be able to see how the tactic can play out. We don't see the tactics potential, basically. So that is reason why I'm using Benfica. But the results are not the most important part of this video. The tactic explaining the tactic is not the results. But let's look at the results. In Liga Portugal, we are the champions. We played 34, we won 29, we drawn three, one at home against Gil Vicente and the other away to Porto. And we lost three games, all three being away from home. In the Champions League, we got knocked out in the round of 16 by Barcelona, losing by just the two goals. I say just the two goals, I mean, <laughs> we lost 5-3 on aggregate. In the Taka de Portugal placard, I, I believe that's how you pronounce it, we did win that. Board expectation reached the semi-final minimum and we've, um, we've won that. In the Allianz Cup, we were expected to be competitive and we also won that. We are joint second when it comes to most goals scored. Now, this I done this save without any set-piece routine, so I'm believing we could have got, we could have sneaked to extra 6, 7, 8 goals using a set-piece routine. The tactic that you guys are going to get it uh, is going to have a set piece routine so just to be transparent you can see goals from corners benfica joint ninth with only three goals from direct free kicks we are joint fourth with two and goals from indirect free kicks we scored three so we haven't relied on set piece there was no set piece routine set up defensively we were very strong we can see that with shots against 254 we had the second best pass completion with 87 percent and the second best average possession with 61 percent of the ball most tackles were not in the top eight most dribbles made we are in second most clean sheets benfica fuels conceded benfica again top goal scorer is ramos with 26 goals most assists gilberto in the list with eight most shots for our striker on that list surely surely most key passes alex grimaldo with 125 we have no other player in the top eight best pass completion our center back verissimo is in that list most tackles won nobody there most dribbles made nobody there most clean sheets our goalkeeper in second place and for the fewest goal um conceded sorry it is our goalkeeper having a quick look at the xg we overperformed but just the one just the one xg on 67.6 if you round it up 68 and we actually scored 69 we overperformed with the points and looking at the possession i mean we were expected to finish first and that is exactly where we finished defensively very strong quiet and impenetrable looking at the tackling i mean we were poor this has to be looked at i didn't actually realize that till now that has to be looked at crossing wise we were very average or fairly average attacking efficiency we were strong aggressive and clinical scoring we were high scoring with high expected goals looking at the shooting as well high quality shooting from the boys possession wise lots of passes accurate with it as well passing dynamic we well, few, um, we had fewer passes allowed against and a lot of passes completed. Now, lastly, looking at the pass map, we don't exactly see a 4-4-2 here. Well, actually, in this game, in the last game, we got a man sent off. We won the competition, the Taka de Portugal or Tassa, Tassa, Tassa de Portugal. And we won that with 10 men. We got a man sent off in the 16th minute. So we effectively played the whole game with 10 men, which is why that pass map looked a bit funky squad wise who were the top goal scorers of course ramos he's got 37 in all competitions never scoring 19 arujo scoring 18 rafa scoring 14 and honestly our holding midfielder our halfback scored 11 looking at the creative players gilberto with 17 assists grimaldo with 13 and rafa with 10 so in all competitions we scored a lot but just in that one uh, liga portugal maybe we could have scored a few more especially if we set up set piece routines but unfortunately yeah that wraps up today's video i hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as i have enjoyed recording it so i will see you guys soon don't forget if you have enjoyed this video hit the thumbs up button like like it hit subscribe subscribe and also you can leave a comment as well i'll see you guys soon stay safe god bless peace out Bloop.